there is a new playing field that is stirring investors' interests the world over. An arena with exciting economic promise and unlimited potential. A pitch boasting an expanding middle class and a GDP per capita that has more than doubled in the last 15 years. This is Africa rising. One company has had a dream and seen the future. One company is the channel through which global capital accesses opportunities of scale in Africa. That company is Centum Investment. Centum was initiated very many years ago by the first president of this nation. Centum is a listed investment company. Our vision is to be Africa's foremost investment channel and we're doing that by creating a platform of opportunities across eight sectors that investors can participate in and also that can offer our shareholders access to otherwise inaccessible investment opportunities. We are taking a lead in the development and so we are the ones who are creating the opportunities and then availing them to other investors within the market. We take opportunities from the ground up, uh, greenfield opportunities, scale those up, de-risk them and then offer other investors access to those opportunities. In recent years, the continent has been characterized by rapid urbanization and demographic changes, leading to significant evolution in the real estate industry. As the growing populations drive demand for different types of real estate, Africa's cities expand and many more new ones arise. There's a massive opportunity for real estate in Sub-Saharan Africa, particularly East Africa. Population growth, particularly in this region, is very high. The real estate market is not actually meeting the demands of the population growth. Athena Properties is a wholly owned subsidiary of Centum Investments Limited. Athena Properties actually plays in an end-to-end -end solution in real estate. We call ourselves the real estate developer of choice. Where traditional developers will build unplanned informal development, Athena takes large-scale development mixed use, works the development in terms of proper planning infrastructure. We then take the development from conceptualization right through design, right through construction, and then into the operation phase where we actually manage the development moving forward. Athena is developing two new cities in Kenya and Uganda, both cities under construction. The first phase is scheduled to be complete by quarter two next year, 2016. We are working on Two Rivers Development, which is a new city on, on 100 acres in diplomatic blue zone of Nairobi in Kenya, and Paumarina City, which is a new lakefront city in Uganda. Two Rivers is a mixed-use uh, commercial development that is said to be business, residential, and uh, commercial location of choice for people in Kenya. This phase includes the largest shopping mall in Sub-Saharan Africa. Paumarina will be more of a resort town, so it will have all the users in it. It will have educational facilities, healthcare facilities, hospitality facilities, recreational sports facilities, residential office parks and retail facilities. When we actually develop, we provide all of the services and the services they are privately provided and privately maintained, which means that through its development lifespan, there will be no deterioration of services. Developments like Two Rivers and Pearl Marina in Uganda are going to start drawing a lot of international retailers, international businesses to Kenya. And it's the first step to actually provide that economy growth for Kenya. Access to power plays a significant role in economic growth and investment decisions. Infrastructure, especially in power and transport, creates consumer demand and its absence stifles it. Kenya's power industry is uh, still in its formative stages. In total we have 2,200 megawatts installed in generating capacity for a population of about 45 million people. That is 3% of how much South Africa has. Really, we don't really have much power. Only 35% of people have connectivity to the grid. So imagine every day, two thirds of the people who wake up in Kenya can't take a hot shower. The cost effectiveness and availability of efficient power and transport solutions is perhaps the single greatest driver in the transition from smallholder subsistence agricultural societies to well-lit industrial service societies. Power is still relatively expensive in Kenya. 
the grid is undeveloped and the power is not particularly reliable. Centrum is really focused on creating opportunities and we like to work on projects which are really going to have a transformational impact on our country. We are currently involved in developing two power plants uh, combined in excess of 1,000 200 megawatts of power. One is a 1050 megawatt Lamu coal power project and the second one is a 140 megawatt Geothermal power project. Once completed, Amu Power will be the cheapest independent power producer. This plant alone has the potential of reducing the average cost of power in Kenya by about 30%. That has a significant impact with regards to what those individuals or companies are able to do with those savings. Akira okay, Geothermal, it's a 1 for 140 megawatt project development that Centrum is invested in. It's a greenfield geothermal project uh, whereby we're doing the exploration drilling and then eventually once we find steam we'll build a power plant. We're doing it in two phases. So the first phase is a 70 megawatt. Uh, we're working with Kenjin. Kenjin is contracted to do our drilling. Uh, we've actually began the drilling already. We're seeing a lot more venturing into uh, partnerships with the private sector and uh, from, from an investor point of view allocating to infrastructure projects which we were not seeing about um, two decades ago. So there's obviously been quite a bit of growth in that particular space and we believe that over the next five, ten years the picture will more or less match the kind of allocations we're seeing uh, in emerging markets. As Africa rises, there is a need to package the investment opportunities palatably to meet the needs of various investors from across the globe. From where we sit, we do a bit of the marketing for some of the products that Centrum is looking to roll out. We have two asset management uh, subsidiaries. One is Genesis, which is the second largest asset manager in the country. The other one is Nabo. We are an investor in Platinum, which is a microfinance uh, company. We also an investor in Aon, which is the largest insurance uh, brokerage company in the country. Nabo Capital is the primary driver of third party funds. We provide uh, the link between opportunities and investment solutions. What that means specifically is we not only provide investment solutions to investors but also provide capital to projects needing funds. It's an exciting time not just for the industry but for the investor as well and an opportunity for you to make remarkable returns in a fairly decent amount of time outside of the traditional space. We want to be the real hub of African deals where all the global capital tries to tap into. Access to financial services, be it in the form of services of commercial banks or SME loans, have traditionally been the backbone of financial systems in the world. In Sub-Saharan Africa, there still remains a large portion of the populace that does not have access to these services. Every SME is looking for capital. Debt capital, every SME is looking for it, but the issue is most of them cannot be able to access it. For us as Centrum, and uh, where I see it pretty much, our opportunity is mostly on uh, private equity. We have invested in uh, KREP Bank, uh, where we own a majority stake, 67%. The opportunity is huge because as we look at it, it's a brownfield uh, bank. We are finding ourselves at the confluence of many forces. The convergence of mobile with banking, the emergence of a very strong middle class, strong infrastructure projects. I can only say that the future is very, very bright for the banking industry in Kenya. Consumption increases as population grows. Selective consumption further increases as a middle class group grows. Over 95% of the population is less than 60 years. You're looking at um, uh, the fastest growing urbanization rate in, the, in this part of the world. The good thing about urbanization, it means then they require manufactured products, it means they require real estate, it means they require transport, and all these are services that will lead to manufacturing and at least uh, further on the growth of the GDP. This is further reflected in the large number of people with disposable income who demand quality products. The FMCG sector is uh, one of the fast growing uh, sectors in, uh, in the Kenyan economy and with a growing population basically the, the market is there. Almasi is the holding company for Rift Valley bottlers, uh, Kisi bottlers and Mount Kenya bottlers which are the local Coca-Cola franchises for those specific territories. These three businesses were basically contracted to produce Coca-Cola products which include Fanta, Coca-Cola, Sprite, Stony, 
and uh, the sunny water and also the juices as well. We've been working towards uh, increasing our capacity through improving uh, the, the storage facilities that we have. We've just invested in uh, RGB line. The RGB line is really the returnable glass bottle line. We've invested in uh, a 36,000 BPH line and we are also right now in the process of investing in an additional 40,000 BPH PET line. So PET is really the plastic bottles. We've also been improving our own internal efficiencies so that we may better serve the market. Over 2,000 patients go to India per year. And then you have more than 1,000 going to other countries, including South Africa, Turkey, and the UK. So we saw there's an opportunity and there's demand for these services. We're going to partner with a credible global institution that will then disrupt the market uh, by providing affordable uh, but, but quality healthcare into our market. Education is an interesting sector. The majority of the middle class will attribute their movement from the low income to middle class to education. So that explains the importance of education. In education, we are looking to build schools across Kenya and East Africa, right from kindergarten through to high school. We have already identified an international partner who operate schools internationally in the Middle East, in Europe, in the US. We anticipate that the first school should be ready by the end of 2017. What they bring on board is a different way of providing education, uh, which is hinged on technology. What we want to do there is to consolidate the entire value chain from primary production, storage, processing to, to value addition, all the way to the market and create a business there of scale that will also allow other partners to plug in, including smallholders and investors across the value chain. As corporations build the economy, they should also build the communities around them. As such, the Centum Foundation is an accessible vehicle that leverages on partnerships to consolidate, scale and facilitate activities that not only have a high impact on the community, but also provide sustainable solutions. What we have done through the foundation is then identify young entrepreneurs with winning ideas and then provide the relevant support they require and invest in their enterprises. And, and with that investment of capital, but also holding their hand in terms of all other operational aspects of their business, we want to see them grow from small to medium to larger enterprises that then will directly impact on the Kenyan economy. Our focus is to create opportunities, not just for ourselves, but for other investors who are like-minded, who wish to join us in any of these sectors and lead their development. It's great working for a company that is able to attract significant sums of investment, both locally and internationally. We're looking to grow assets from uh, the current 40 billion shillings to about 120 billion shillings by 2019, and to be active in uh, eight key sectors of Kenya's economy. We are creating things that have never been created before. So what we have is a team of highly entrepreneurial, visionary individuals who want to make a difference in Kenya and also a difference in Africa.